Greetings mathematicians. Um, let's look at today's video notes. And our title is Comparing and Ordering Fractions. And for those of you just joining us with our, our video notebook, I'm going to flip back to my table of contents. Now, let's see. On my very first page here, I've got page 1L and 1R for note taking. If you need to, go back and watch that video. And if you missed yesterday, Intro to Fractions, they're on my notebook on 2L and 2R. So today we are comparing and ordering fractions. I'm using the page number 3L and 3R. So if I can zoom out for a moment, you'll see I'm using both left and right. And if we look down in the corner here, you'll see that's where I'm numbering the page 3L and 3R. Okay, let's take a look at our title and our learning objective. Let's see. Comparing and ordering fractions. Objective. I will compare fractions, improper fractions, and mixed numbers. Go ahead and repeat it with me. I will compare fractions, improper fractions, and mixed numbers. Excellent. So I know we have a few language learners that are with us. I just want to make sure that we are using the right or the, the same terms. And I think for comparing, let's see, I think the, the pronunciation here is Zhang Bi. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am. And we are talking about fractions or Fen Shu. Fen Shua. Fen Shu. I think that's the correct characters for fraction. All right. Now, inside my learning objective, I have fractions. That means less than one, smaller than one, which would be here. I've got a fraction. I've got a portion. It's smaller than one whole. I've got improper fraction. That's where our, our numerator is bigger than the denominator. And I'm just gonna draw an arrow to that instead of rewriting. And then the last would be a mixed number. Can you say it with me? Mixed number. And this mixed number is sometimes referred to as a mixed fraction. And that essentially means that we have a whole number and a fraction together. So we have one plus two thirds would be equal to one and two thirds. Another way to write that would be since we're talking about denominator of 3, it would be 3 over 3 is equal to 1 plus the fraction, which is 2 thirds. And if we actually add those two numerators, we get what? That's right. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 thirds, which would bring us back to an improper fraction. All right, so there's quite a relationship between these two items. Uh, generally speaking, improper fractions and mixed numbers, they're always bigger than one whole. All right. Now let's look at the language of our objective. And we're talking about comparing, or Jean B, compare. So our comparisons, we have um, if something is greater than, say it with me, greater than. And I think the, the character for this one is, is like a bigger. It's just a bigger. And let's see. Our next symbol here, we have greater than. Next one is less than. And the character for this one is a little more complicated. I, I pre-drew it out. And let me small enough to fit on there. Less than. And the last symbol equal to, got another post-it. And unfortunately, I didn't size this one correctly. Our equal to is this character for equal to. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up here. For a moment and I'll draw an arrow to my equal to. All right now 
We're going to be using fractions. We're going to be using improper fractions and mixed numbers, and we'll be using these comparative terms, greater than, less than, equal to. This is stuff you've all seen before. Now, the real important thing is, and I need you to say this in a dramatic tone with me, denominators, say it with me, denominator. Say it with me. Denominators are important. I can't hear you. One more time. Denominators are important. And the reason they're important is they give us scale. They give us size. So if we're looking at two fractions, if we're looking at two-thirds and we're looking at two-eighths, we need to think about what those fractions mean and we need to visualize. Um, to help visualize, I'm actually using these uh, little post-it strips and I've put a post-it strip down here for each one of these fractions. Notice my numerator is the number two, my denominator is three. Right now I'm showing three pieces because this is the whole number. This, the, this tells me that there are three parts. So three total parts. And now I'm gonna see what's shaded. It's going to be two out of three. And I can actually shade over so it's a little more visible. Let's zoom in on that. So I'm visualizing this. I'm saying two of three parts. And let's look at the next one. I have a de new denominator of eight. Look what happened to the parts. Did the parts get bigger in size or smaller in size? I know the number got bigger, but the pieces got a lot smaller. So this is a really difficult concept to, to grab onto. When the denominator pieces get bigger in number, the pieces actually get smaller. So if I have two out of three pieces, it's very large. Compared to two out of eight pieces, that looks like this. I've only got two of eight pieces. So which one is bigger? So first, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about those denominators. I'm going to think, how many pieces are there? Here there's eight small parts that create one whole. If I only have two, that means I have fewer. So I can actually go ahead and match these up. And which one is bigger, the two-thirds or the two-eighths? That's right, two-thirds is bigger. So if I were going to write this out, I could say, let me start with the first fraction, I could say two-thirds, I'll have a big circle here, and then I'll have the other fraction, two-eighths, and I'll say two-thirds is greater than two-eighths. I could write the same statement and invert it. I'll go backwards, I'll start with two-eighths. Two-eighths is something two-thirds, what do you think? I just reversed the order. Two-eighths is, is it bigger or smaller? That's right, it's smaller. So I'm gonna point at the smaller. So two-eighths is less than two-thirds. The only thing we can't do here is say equal because they're actually not equal parts. There is a difference. Now if I, let's move this up a little bit. I can't have equal parts here because nothing lines up. All right, let's take a look at another sample. And I'm moving over to 3R. And let's look at an easy problem. Why do you think this one's easy, this comparison problem? If you're unsure, go back to that big line we wrote here and we said, Denominators are important. If we look at the denominators, what do you notice? They're the same. When they're the same denominator, it's really easy to compare. So I've got one out of four shaded, and three fourths, you could say one, two, 
three. So these are shaded. Now I can look at this visually. Which one is bigger? You could probably see it. Now, just for the sake of visualization, I'm going to move this over and compare the two. That's right. The one on top is bigger. So my first number is smaller. Am I going to use greater than, less than, or equal to? That's right. I'm going to point at the smaller. And I'm going to have my crocodile mouth open to the larger. You might have heard that before in a previous class. But we're going to point at the smaller. So one quarter is less than three fourths. All right. Let's make it a little bit harder. Again, start with the denominators. Eight, that means the pieces are tiny. Four, the pieces are a little bit bigger. Let's go and shade these in. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, two fourths. All right, this one's a little trickier. So let me take my fraction bar, I'll move it over. Ooh, there we go. Which one do you think is bigger? Five-eighths or two-fourths? Five-eighths is just a bit bigger. Now, the thing to think about with this one is two is half of four. To be equal, we would need half of the denominator, four-eighths. So if this were four-eighths, we would say it was equal to. We're slightly bigger than half here. So we can say five-eighths is greater than two-fourths. Let's move down to a tricky one. Four thirds? Is that proper, or I'm sorry, is that a regular fraction or an improper fraction? Take a look at the numerator. Is it bigger or smaller than the denominator? That's right, it's bigger. So that means it's improper. Which also means it is bigger than one whole. So this is bigger than one whole. And this is just a regular fraction, which means it's smaller than one. Now I could make some strips. I could draw this out, I could really think about it. But if I know this one's bigger than one and this one's smaller than one, what's my answer going to be? That's right, greater than. Four thirds or something bigger than one whole is bigger than something smaller than one whole. All right, another tricky visualization where we have a mixed number it means we have one and one half. We've got an, a mixed number that's bigger than one. Here we've got an improper fraction. Something we can always do with those improper fractions is divide down. Six divided by three. Six over three is the same as six divided by three. And if you know your division, six divided by three is two. So one and a half versus two. You could say one and a half is smaller than. All right, so again, it gets a little trickier when we get into improper fractions and mixed numbers, but the same thinking and visualization applies. And for those of you still hanging in there with me, I've got a big surprise for you. When I was a kid, they only taught me the shortcut. And some of you might already know this shortcut. Um, classically known as a butterfly method. Uh, this is where we have two fractions we're comparing. Three-fifths, two-thirds. We have different denominators. So the thirds would be larger than the fifths. But if we're trying to figure it out on really quickly, we can do this motion where we start up. We start with the bottom denominator, and we go across the problem to the two, and we multiply. And then we start at the bottom denominator, the three, and we go across to the other numerator, like this motion. And really, it would look like this. We could say three 
times 3 is 9. 5 times 2 is 10. Which is bigger, 9 or 10? That's right, 10. So we could say 9 is less than 10. And there are reasons that this works, but this might just be your go-to shortcut when comparing fractions. All right. So what you're going to have to do is visualize, make models, but if you're in a time crunch, you can always use the shortcut, the butterfly method. Again, that is starting from the bottom, going up, 5 times 2 equals 10, 3 times 3, and we always put it up in the upper left and the upper right. 3 times 3 is 9, and then we can compare those answers and end up with the right answer. All right, guys, good luck on your Prodigy questions today. I look forward to checking your scores. Have a great day.